Welcome back everybody here on Just a Zack, where it's my continued mission to show you guys an interesting video game almost every single day this time. We are going to have a look at Million Monster Militia. Million Monster Militia is, at least in my opinion, playing in the world of One Punch Man, or at least in a similar world, like apocalyptic. Everyone has weird powers, there's mutated giant monsters like almost every day, but here it's almost every day man and a bunch of other people with their weird powers who have to go and stop them and it's our mission to go there and organize these fight back against uh, these evil monsters with their weird, uh, weird and quirky backstory so to speak this is a rogue light uh, auto battler game i already played a couple of rounds managed to get to the end of the demo and you know i th think it is definitely interesting enough to show it to you guys so of course, we're going to go with enter player name, Zach. Without further ado, there's no real options menu. There's one audio slider. That's it. Okay. No options menu at all. Uh, fair. We're also going to have a look at the official demo. The full game is still set to re be released at some time in the future. There's no set release date yet. Yeah, let's start the game. Let's see what it offers us, shall we? It's the year of 2073. The United States is under attack. The once peaceful countryside lies in ruins, besieged by 50 colossal titans. Travel the country to assemble a militia. Warriors, laser frogs, tax accountants, in sentient plants. Let the battle begin. Let's save America! It's always America. It has to be America that gets, you know, to be attacked by everything. Sure, million monster militia. I do like this little bit of a setup. I always prefer to have at least some kind of reason and story to, you know, know what I'm doing with the game. Good gameplay is always the most important, but good story. I mean, there's of course games and other mediums where story is the most important and integral part, but there's also games that can just benefit purely from the gameplay. But even if a if you have a game that is completely gameplay focused, I still like it when they, you know, have a nice package as a story to say the least. Okay, Boston, Massachusetts, let's go. Let's engage the first evil Titan. It's Cole Shellyfish the Overlord. Cole has a humble uh, was a humble crustacean, living a peaceful life on the ocean floor. One fateful day, he has caught. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, he ha he was caught in a fisherman's net and brought to the surface, where he was sold to a traveling circus as a sideshow attraction. Furious at his mistreatment, Cole used his demonic powers to break free from his cage and flee into the nearby city where he now seeks to break havoc and extract revenge on the human world that wronged him. With his powerful claws and infernal magic, Cole has taken over the city and forces its inhabitants to bow before him or face the wrath of his mighty pincers. Also, what is going on here? What, what, what is going on with background? Are we sinking already because I'm breathing so slowly? What happens if this reaches the top? Oh, nothing. Okay, that is probably just a little bit of a visual bug. <laughs> Man, Zark, read faster. All right, there we go. And this is America is, is under attack. Hit the deploy, hit deploy to deploy your militia randomly. This is the important part. It's always uh, randomly. Attack the boss, fair. Then the boss attacks you. Recruit new members that synergize together between the rounds. Your militia can grow to any size, but a maximum of 25 will always randomly be selected to fight each round. Good luck, Captain. All right, this is the enemy card. This is the core gameplay. It is a numbers go up game. You make your selections between the rounds and try to get the best synergy as possible. Plan ahead, because there's also synergies that, you know, destroy things and so on. But this is definitely a numbers go up game. So we have the gameplay options again, which is, I mean, can you call this an options menu? It's at least, at least you can turn on the volume. I, I'm not, I don't want to dwell too much for this. 
Um, there we go. This is essentially uh, yeah, well, what we have. And everything that we get, also items, are essentially uh, part of our militia, will be categorized at one uh, as like one slot and will always de uh, be deployed. So later on we can get like a hand grenade that also deals damage that will randomly de be de deployed on this grid here that you can see. And right now we only have these civilians, militia guys, who are just, you know, they have one attack, they fight for us, that's about it. And even a round lock. A round is defined as a deploy and attack a boss turn. This lock reports on anything that was done to a piece. The lock is reset at the time of deployment. That's nice. There we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lives, which frankly, maybe even ten. I guess if this goes down, we get hit one more time, that would be over. So you can say lives, but frankly, it's the amount of turns. So far, I have not found any single boss that deals like, frankly, does anything else, but just going to attack us for one damage. So after 10 rounds, uh, we're loose, or we managed to defeat this current boss. We're, this one currently has only 80 HP. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to get so much worse. And we have this button, which calls in reinforcements. Later on, you will see we can use this once per run to essentially deal 10 times the damage from our previous turn. And sometimes it's important to finish off the boss or something. But yeah, let's deploy. There we go. Again, randomly, we have five militia guys, and they got randomly deployed on this grid. And they will now deal, now we can have a look, they will now deal one damage once we tell them to attack. Let's go. One damage each. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. We dealt five damage. Now we could go with this. Do ten times your last attack's damage. Well, we don't, hopefully don't need this against the first boss. Okay, now it's the boss's turn. Our guys go back into our militia, uh, militia. we took some damage, and now we have to make a choice what to add to our rooster, so to speak. We can go with the dire wolf, and this is where the goes, uh, game goes completely crazy, and which is the main appeal, which I very much like. We have dire wolves, we have priests, we have books, items, we have sheeps, which I think are very important if you want to go with the dragon build. There's dragons later on as well, and droids, and biologists. You have necromancy, you have demons, you have so many things, and this is just the demo. There's going to be so much more in the main game, and this is the main gimmick, so to speak, which has to appeal to you. That you can go with completely crazy, weird, and wild builds and you try to get the best synergy with uh, what you are being offered. So I already know what I want to try to go for as a build. Um, having played a couple of rounds previously, I had the most success with actually a beast build. But what I see right now, I'm going to pick this biologist because this is a human, yes, and only deals one damage, but his ability is great. Marks every adjacent, adjacent book for its destruction. Okay, this is a book. A book is an item. Uh, permanently increasing its own base damage by one for each one. So every time we also have a book on the grid, the biologist, and if it's adjacent, which... Again, every piece will be placed randomly on the grid, so we have to have the biologist randomly be beside a book. Then he's essentially going to read it, consume it, and it's going to increase its own damage permanently by one attack. But he also adds bonus damage to every adjacent beast and plant um, yeah, by his own base damage. That's the important part. So... We can, he can read all these books, get stronger and stronger, and all the, well, plants too, but all the beasts adjacent to him also get this buff. What is the book, by the way? If two adjacent books are found that are not marked for destruction, marks them for destruction and transforms itself in the bookshelves. So bookshelves are a thing as well. So, wow, that's a lot. Um, those things are also going to do something. But I will try to go for a lot of books, increase the human, because later on I want to have a bunch of beasts like the direwolf. I also tried once to go with the uh, priest build, base damage plus one for each adjacent undead, marks all adjacent undead for destruction. Interesting, but yeah, let's let's go with the bio biologist so far. I have, I might lack some experience, but so far I found the beast build by far the best, at least going for me. I haven't tried every single build yet, but maybe they're not quite balanced. I don't know, maybe I like experience. There's also items like gold, that I haven't found the use of, probably because I didn't get the appropriate piece, because they also, as you got see previously, and you will see later on, they also all have different rarities. 
But now let's go deploy. Right now this biologist is just going to add one damage, nothing more, but hopefully later on he's gonna be like the backbone of our current army. And there's a soldier, which might be very good early on. Crimson Terror, Claymore. This is an item, 10 times bonus to this deployment's damage for all pieces in the column in front of this. Wow, that's amazing. But marks itself and all those pieces uh, for destruction. So we're going to deal a bunch of damage, then this disappears. And there's this gold item I spoke of earlier, which is going to deal one damage. It's going to take up one space on our grid. So we need a piece that does something with the gold. We don't have that. I'm gonna go with the soldier. We don't have a beast. We could also reroll. We can reroll every turn once. But early on, I think the soldier is decent because the soldier transforms each adjacent civilian into a soldier. So we currently have five civilians in our team, in our rooster, which are, um, well, the worst thing imaginable common civilians <laughs> the peasant folk <laughs> that is too low for us let's at least transform them into true soldiers yeah let's go with this which is essentially going to double all their attack right they need to be adjacent uh, luckily it's not like in a cross like maybe in other tactical games also which have a, gr a grid so it's actually all the spaces so also diagonally there we go so they attack now and the boss attacks and this one got now also turned into a soldier which is, ooh, another biologist. Iron Stoker Tinker transforms every adjacent scrap metal into a robot. That's also pretty cool. Ghost, pretty cool. Can never be destroyed by another piece like the priest we saw earlier, who's always trying to destroy a, um, an undead like a ghost. He couldn't, but the ghost also has always a 10% chance it will just destroy itself because it finally manages to move on to the afterlife. We have another die wolf. That's cool. Okay, another biologist. That's cool. We have the integral parts. But we need more. Okay, there we go. Dealt 10 damage. Transform two more people. We take damage. Let's see. A giant rat that does 1.75 uh, times the damage for each adjacent rat. That's okay. Seed pot. I'm gonna try to reroll once. Well, we only have this one. Oh, this is even worse in a way. So we have the Anna kills. We have a doctor. Any empty canister in the grid will transform into a strength serum. If you have less than three health, any med kit on the grid will heal you fully. Interesting. We don't have a med kit. Power pellet doubles the damage of all adjacent pieces this deployment. Then marks itself for destruction. Silver transforms any ver dragon within a two square radius into a monster hunter. This is a ver dragon. It does plus one damage for every gold dragon, uh, gold dragon, ver dragon, or red dragon currently on the field. So right now it does only one. Yeah, double damage. We could go with the claymore and hope this hits our militia or soldiers. They deal more damage and not our bio biologist. So that would get rid of the units we don't want. Let's try this. Let's have a claimer. We also need some damage. Okay, so this one, if I got this... No, it's in front of it, right? 10 bonus to this deployment damage for all pieces in the column in front of this. Great. And it's at the start. At least it's going to deal one damage. So this one is not going to deal more damage. 10, but he's not going to... Would be nice if this one would be destroyed. But hey... We might need the bonus damage. At least we don't have a civilian anymore. All the others got turned into soldiers. Game developer. Every piece on the grid has a minimum one base damage whenever this is deployed. I feel like there's a hidden story there. Reroll? Come on, I need something good. Okay, a horny beast. A marks adjacent gold dragon egg, cockatrice egg, seed pot, fungal spore, and giant fungus for destruction and adds plus one to its base damage. So very good for monsters. I still hope I get whatever. So what I'm mostly hoping is, of course, beasts. But also there is like a librarian or so, which is also human, but the librarian is going to spawn a book every turn up to like 10 books. Then he's going to destroy himself or so. And these 10 books over all these turns can, of course, be read by our bio biologists to make those guys stronger. Okay, barbarian does uh, plus five damage if this is in the front row. Internal affairs officer. When deployed... You must select one piece on the grid to be marked for destruction. Destroys itself after five deployments. I mean, this allows us to get rid of our soldiers, which we on the long term want to do. After three deployments, it's plus one bonus damage and marks itself for destruction. Iron Stalker. You really need a way to defeat this monster. Okay, let's try this internal officer. Okay, we need to select a piece. This soldier is gonna die. I'm sorry. For now, let's just attack. Okay, we still deal enough damage, so we're gonna win this regardless. We have one soldier less again. We are taking out the bad guys in our 
area, which is fine, direwolf to damage, but we have a book. I want this book, because this book can be read. It's unfortunately not close to any of our... Okay, I'm gonna mark you, sorry. Biologist, but it's there at least. Okay, 12 damage. There we go, one soldier less. That is fine for the time being. Skeleton, slime. Slimes are also interesting. 10% chance to generate a slime. If surrounded by four or more slimes, destroys itself and does 1.65 damage for each adjacent slime. I wonder if they... Did this have an update or maybe something else? Because there's also a chance, um, which I had, to generate golden slimes. And golden slimes, and when there's a bunch of golden slimes, they're going to transform themselves and other adjacent pieces into, like, um, nuclear bombs and so. It's completely crazy. Okay, reroll. Come on. Okay, we have a beast at least. Siren. Oh, very rare. Doubles the damage of every human currently on the grid. Oh, we have a bunch of humans. Would, um, technically, that's not too bad, now that I think about this, because our biologists also are humans. And the biologists give their buffs, which we kind of want to build towards too, towards beasts and plants based on their current damage. And this is going to double the damage. I think this is fine. This is very good, actually. If marked for destruction by another piece, increases its own base damage by three and then marks itself for destruction. This would actually also work with this human officer. That we have. But yeah, let's take the very rare Siren monster. Let's go. And there we go. Um, everyone gets double damage. All the humans. We're gonna get rid of this soldier regardless. At the end of the turn. Deal damage. 20. We defeated the first boss. Okay. And finally, one book got re uh, read because it was actually close to one of our biologists. Okay. Next up is Mekla Chakrabarti, the NPU robot. Megla was originally created as a news reporting robot for NPR, but due to a malfunction, she gained sentience and turned evil. With her advanced technology, she quickly took control of the city, broadcasting her twisted propaganda to all the citizens through hacked NPR frequencies. It's up to the player to take her down and to restore the city's airwaves to their rightful owners. How dare you! Corrupting the news that would never happen uh, with normal humans. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna get rid of this soldier. There we go. She should soon disappear as well, right? 18 damage, that's fine. He's gonna attack us. Or she, sorry. All right, let's see. Oh, another book. Okay, I'm fine. Let's take the book. <laughs> we still don't have a single beast in our beast build, but it's fine. We are, we are clearing the way. This is actually... Oh, did I select you? Oh, up here. Okay, there we go. Attack. Okay, for damage. Okay, and she disappeared as well. We have one soldier left. That is totally fine. And another book. Okay. Or another soldier. <laughs> no, I'm fine with taking my books. Makes these guys stronger. I mean, currently has two attack. This one has four. Doubled, of course. There we go. Please read this book. Thank you. Now it's also four. Oh, finally. Ooh, a terror creeper only attacks every other deployment. Every 10 deployments at a, uh, at a plus 10 to its base damage. When it doesn't attack, it cannot be destroyed. Interesting dog catcher. It's a construct. Marks one adjacent hellhound or dire wolf for destruction, adding plus one to every deployed construct's base damage. Well, we're not really going for constructs. We should work for this as well, right? Okay, dire wolf is fine. Two damage deals plus one damage for every adjacent dire wolf. That's fine. We mostly want this one to be close to our um, biologists, if possible. Four damage, four damage. This book. We really don't have a lot of pieces. It's fine for the time being. Horny beast. Grey ghoul. There, this is what I mean. For each adjacent piece, 20% chance to transform that piece into grey goo. That was it. It wasn't slime, but it was grey goo. If there are 12 plus deployed grey goos, transforms each deployed grey goo into a golden goo. Grenade, nuclear bomb, improvised explosive, or Aegis. This is completely crazy. <laughs> uh, the, trust me, oh man, that is... Empty canister, oh, this is not so good. Scrap metal, soldier power, permanently doubles the base damage of all adjacent pieces for this deployment. Marks itself for destruction. So for this deployment means against this boss, I guess? Terra Creeper, Capacitor. 20% chance to reduce boss damage by 1 and increase its base damage by 10. I guess it means base damage to the Capacitor, not to the boss. Always has a percentage chance of being marked for destruction equal to its base damage. So the Capacitor might be stronger 
getting stronger and might also reduce the damage by the boss. Power up. Oh man, you're really unlucky with all the beasts. Or librarians, for that matter. Permanently doubles the base damage of all HSPs for this deployment. Yeah, it's just against the boss. Let's go with this. Capacitor, sure. There it is. Look at that beautiful attack. So is, is it gonna activate? We took damage. Oh man, I really gotta make sure to actually win this now. Another direwolf, berserker. Ooh, whenever your health is below 25%, this deals additional damage equal to the total of all deployed pieces base damage. That sounds pretty strong, actually. But I really want to go with beast. Come on, direwolf. There's also like, this is what I'm kind of trying to fish for. There's also like a legendary human or so who is going to increase all the damage of beasts. And so he's like one with nature. And if you have that guy, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. We are getting strong. It's fine. 18 damage. Maybe the capacitor is going to rescue us. No. Alchemist medkit. May Ooh, diversity demon. Does damage, uh, damage equal to the number of different types in deployment? If there are five plus different types of pieces deployed, apply one point uh, five damage to all deployed pieces. This could work even though we don't have that many pieces. The pieces because we want to try to go well for beasts. Medkit. Uh... From one HP, it's an additional round, but there's another dire wolf at least. We have a bunch of wolves now. This book never made it right. You're still at four, you're still at four. You at least deal five damage now, thanks to the buff of this one. I think. Base two, bonus three. Deals plus one damage for every adjacent dire wolf. But you have a base of two, and the bonus should be three. And you only get. Oh! So your damage is doubled. It's bonus damage to every adjacent beast by the biologist's own base damage, not the doubled one. Ah, well, still makes them better. So it's not as strong as I thought to be, but hey, at least they deal 5 now. 24. Could win this. Oh well, that hurt. Does this capacitor even do anything? There's another biologist. I really need books. Okay, let's go, whatever. Read the book, please. Okay, 27 damage. We're gonna win this, and you're gonna read this book. Good job. Okay, that's a good thing. We are going to win. There's a Nautilus increases base damage by uh, plus one if adjacent to any water. 20% chance of this will mark itself for destruction if there's no water on the grid. Yeah, this needs some water. We could go with the giant rat. Come on, reroll. Give me something good. Sacrificial, uh, sacrificial spam. If at least eight pieces are marked for its destruction in one round, gain one health. It's destroyed when used. Hmm. Fire. No. Adjacent water into steam. If there are less than eight sheep we deploy, 20% chance to spawn another sheep. I mean, technically, if we can get a bunch of sheep on the field, that could be interesting because they could all benefit from our biologists, right? Anyway, another dire wolf. Apparently, we're the wolf king right now. Woo woo! Okay, we won this at least. Not as strong as I would like it to be, but we won. All right, continue. This is still not the beast build I'm gonna go for. Pan, the Lord of the Dark Herd. Hero? Herd. <clears throat> Pan, a once powerful and respected leader, suffered a de devastating attack by a group of human adventurers. Han's outlook on life and society was forever changed. He became disillusioned with the idea of peaceful coexistence and instead embraced the primal, savage nature of his species. He began to amass an army of like-minded creatures and soon set his sights on the nearby city, which he saw as a symbol of human oppression and domination. With his twin axes in hand and his army of beasts at his back, Pan launched a ferocious assault on the city, quickly overpowering its defenders and claiming it as his own. So I like the lore. It's still so weird that this happens here on the screen. And so far, the first boss, okay, the second boss had something going with like civilians and helping here and meteor. This one is also more beast themed. I like this. This always tells me that this boss maybe wants to deploy, deploy its own monsters here on the field or something like that, or does something. And I really hope that's going to be in the full game, because right now they are just have more HP and we have the same turn. They are different lore and interesting lore, but mechanically they are as simple as they can be and there's no difference so far. 
which is kind of sad, and I hope it's going to be changed. Is this gonna ever going to do something? 20% chance to reduce boss damage by 1, increase its base damage by 10%. I guess we never got lucky with this 20% roll, right? Let's see. Come on, capacitor. No. 34 damage, though. Giant red water. Improvised explosive. Does 30% of the boss's remaining health as damage? Marks all adjacent pieces and itself for destruction. No, thank you. I want to reroll. Another dire wolf. Element beast. Technically, we could go with the dog catcher, but yeah, for now, more dire wolves. Come on. Okay, 32 damage. It's all right. Captain flag applies. Um, X 7.5 damage to a random piece of of the most common type deployed that does greater than zero damage. Uh huh. Uh, that's that's a phrase. Panther does double damage when adjacent to at least one type of terrain. 50% chance to escape destruction. Interesting. I mean, it's a four damage beast. Let's go with that. Sure. A little bit of damage couldn't be too bad. Let's attack. Boss turn. It's fine. Thank you. Diversity demon giant. Red webbing. Seed pop barbarian. Reroll. Come on. Give me something good. Hydra. If marked for destruction. Pacifist. No. Element beast. Does three times damage for each deployed water, fire, or steam. Marking each for destruction. Interesting, but no, another dire wolf then. Apparently, we really are the wolf gang right now. Oh, woo! Seven damage. Bonus five, not bad. Check. 52 damage. We're doing f okay. Power for pilot slime biologist. We really need books. Okay, one more. Okay, we have four biologists. This has to be it. I'm Please, you guys gotta remind me. I'm not gonna get another one. We really need books, though, now. This might be too much. Base 4, base 1, base 2. Okay. I'm gonna win against this boss, at least. Ferret, a beast. Give Dar plus 2 damage for each item in the field. This is what I'm looking for. This is the unique one. We want Dar. Because Dar is so important. We don't really have that many items to reroll. Come on. We want Dar or books. Dar books. Uh, Varroa Destructor deals damage equal to the total amount of health you've lost this entire run. This is actually not too bad, frankly. If fire is... Yeah, let's go with this. It's a monster, but it pretty much deals a lot of damage usually. Like right now, 20 damage. Yeah. This is gonna help us. And we really didn't have that much better stuff, right? Let's go. Okay, next boss. Oh, kind of skip this. It's Bernie Sanders, which probably is some kind of weird America joke, I suppose. Fair enough. Okay, let's attack 500 HP again. Remember, like, the first best, how that one has, like, only 50 or 80? Oh, writer! Yes! Oh, wait. If there are fewer than five books deployed, generates a box. Marks itself for destruction after generating 10 deck books. There we go. I wonder if this got updated. I'm not sure if it was the same before. But we want writers. He's gonna generate at least 10 books. This is good. We need those books. Okay, he applied on the field. Also, he's gonna deal at least double damage now, thanks to the siren. And now we have one book to our inventory, so the next deployment is gonna appear. And buffs our biologists. Okay, this is good. This is definitely good. Iron Stalker, Claymore, Alchemist. Destroys each adjacent scrap metal and then adds nine gold to your militia. Again, I have never seen what we need gold for. Maybe dragons or so. Maybe they get a buff. And, you know, the more gold you have, I have no idea. Uh, for every water currently, no reroll. Gold, seed pot, android, improvised. Ah, uh, ferret. I mean, it's beast. We really need Dar, though. Let's go. Okay, as you can see, our uh, militia, we have 19 right now. The grid also gets fuller and fuller, which technically, of course, we want to have a full grid. Did this capacitor ever do anything? 14 deploys. Are you telling me this 20% chance never once worked? Increases the base damage by 10. Always has a percentage chance of being marked for destroying you through those base damage. Okay, maybe we were just never lucky. But this is not how 14 deployments, really now. So weird. Giant bird or oh, double star's damage cannot be destroyed. We need Dar, but I'll take the bird for now. We have a giant bird. The birds are here. Nice. Go attack. There we go. 82 damage. You are reading, getting smarter and stronger. Great. Okay, ooze, priest, anarchist, laser frog, giant wreck, hell portal. What? A rare structure. Generates one to five hellhound with each deployment. Marks itself for the destruction after doing this for eight deployments. 
So if you want to have a bunch of hellhounds, which sounds freaking awesome, that would be cool. But we will. We want Dar. Uh, or a Dar, a wolf. One more, sure. There are so many wolves. I mean, they're kind of helping each other, right? Bonus nine, bonus six. So that is definitely nice. I actually wonder if there's incentive in this game to try to still deal as less damage as possible towards the boss and maybe, you know, get some healing items in to just re-roll as many new pieces as possible. I wonder if you can kind of cheese the game with that or so. You know, unlimited heals and unlimited turns for new stuff or something like that. Okay, game developer, paramedic. Unmarks any human beast or monsters in any two square radius for destruction. Okay, no. When deployed, you must select one. Well, destroying more. We still have one useless soldier, so to speak. And we have this capacitor, which never does anything. That's ah, fine, we rule for now. Sheep, terror, creeper, hell portal. Aegis. Adjacent pieces marked for destruction will be saved this round. Adding plus one to its own bias damage for each one. Interesting. We could go with a beast. I mean, hmm. The hell portal sounds pretty cool, actually. Oh, this is not easy. Or we could choose none, of course. But do we really want to do that? Heals you by one HP. I mean, hellhounds would be nice, also considering the amount of wolves we have to then maybe get this dock catcher thing going on. To really make that strong and go for constructs. Constructs. Uh, let's just take the medkit. It's fine. We don't need that. Medkit is just like a weird box here. <laughs> but sure. Look at this ferret. It looks so feral. Okay, we won this combat. You raid something. We gain health. It's fine. Let's go to the next one. Robobo Rosabot. Yeah. Robobo was a simple robotic assistant designed to help with construction and maintenance tasks. But after a malfunction in his programming, he became obsessed with power and control. He started to modify himself, adding weapons and armor until he became a towering juggernaut of metal and circuitry. His thirst for domination led him to take over the city, using his advanced technology and superior firepower to crush any who oppose him. Again, I feel like this lore kinda wants us to think he uses like constructs and items against us or something like that, you know? But mechanically it doesn't happen. I feel like there should be some of his skill on the board or so. Which is like, I feel like the lore is kind of preparing us for that. Which would be cool, but so far it doesn't happen. Okay, 127 damage. We are doing surprisingly okay. Oh, I actually didn't take damage. So I guess the capacitor finally worked after, what, 20 things? Recycle them. Marks all adjacent items for destruction. Permanently increases its own base damage for every recycler in your military. Uh, militia by each. No, reroll. Come on. Ooh, bioweapon. Does 30% of the boss's remaining health as damage. Marks itself and all humans currently deployed for destruction. Nope, Idol of the Dead, add one skeleton to your militia and destroy it after three uses. Barbarian, Anarchist, Word Dragon, Laser Frog. Uh, any water? I'm, I'm actually going to choose none. We need something better. And our damage output so far is alright. 131. Alright. Took one damage. Do we still have the capacitor? Oh, a book! Okay, single book is still good. Let's go. There's the capacity. Yeah, base damage 10 now. And now it would, again, a 20% chance to save us for one damage and to increase its own attack by 10. But he now also has a 10% chance to just destroy itself. 142 damage. Oh, yes, read these books. Amazing. Get stronger. Eternal first soldier. Bionet. No, no, I can't take another one. Reroll. I think we have a good amount of biologists in the team right now. Ark of the Covenant, a rare item. Does plus one damage for each undead on the grid. Transforms each human on the grid into a ghost. Marks itself for destruction. Hmm. We could go with another forest, beast, chemical drum. Ah, it's fire adjacent, Captain Flag. Yeah, let's have one more beast right now. How many items? We have 22. So the grid isn't fully full yet. And we still have a couple of items. I mean, this wolf now deals 11 damage thanks to the base of these guys. Yeah, he gets buffed twice, right? Once by this biologist and once by this one. Maybe I should have picked a fifth one. I don't know. I feel like maybe four to five, you know, is a good number for the entire grid. And maybe a fifth one, but it's fine. 
We also want to make our current uh, biologist very smart and strong enough, right? Okay, reroll. Writer. Oh, yes, another writer. That means more books. That is awesome. Yes, please. Okay. We are saving the world with biology. <laughs> Fighting back with nature, because nature is our friend. Another direwolf. Apprentice thief. Whenever this is deployed, you have one fewer choices of pieces to select from that round. Transforms into a journeyman thief after 20 deployments. This is also a thing which you now, once you did this by experience, of course, but you know, you're already highlighting this journeyman thief. Please would be cool if I hover over this, I could click this or whatever. Well, well I may not click because I wanna, don't want to select this apprentice thief. But if, uh, if the game would tell me what a journeyman thief actually is. Sounds good. And I mean, technically, 10 more damage. We have one less choice here, which is not that good. But a 10 base, 10, uh, base 10 damage thing is pretty good. Also, considering that we have a siren, that would be 20 damage right now. But I'm greedy. I want to have my beast and I want to have this dark guy. Oh, another writer. Okay, that is good. That is good. All the knowledge, read the books. Yes, good job. <laughs> 191 damage. Yes, get smarter. Okay, cool. Get back, let's go. Burning dog. Six out of seven, come on. I still want to find this Dar guy. I mean, biologist doing good job. 206 damage so far, get smarter. Good job, good job, we take that. Do I still whale? Ooh, it's a rare beast, actually. If not adjacent to water, then add one water to the militia. Ha. Huh. And water, of course, is a 10% chance to mark itself for destruction. So that is just if we want to combo that with something else. I don't want to reroll. Again, this hell portal. And another direwolf. Sure, let's go. Okay, and grit is still not completely full. There's also, which is cool, you can get like a human engineer or so. And the human engineers unlocks multiple grit slots. Right now we have, I think, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, these 25 grits. And if you have a human engineer in your squad, he's going to allow you to deploy things on these one, two, three grids as well, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's go team. There we go, 211 damage. You have a base of seven, which is gonna be all the buff to the adjacent ones. Seven, nine even, six. Okay, that's pretty decent. Read these books, good job guys. I like how we just have writers while fight. I like the, you know, hat cinema. Like, we have all these bees who are going to actively fight this giant lava monster dog. And in the background, we have these biologists who are going to, you know, okay, come on, wolf number two, wolfie, oh, you're the cutest wolfie, come on, bite him from the left, bite, bite him from the right. Like, they're kind of like the tacticians somehow with these animals. And, you know, as the biologists also, they are directing uh, the beast. And in the background, we have the writers who are constantly, <laughs> gotta write the book, gotta write the book of knowledge that they somehow make up on the spot to give them the biologist so they become smarter at directing these wild beasts. I don't know, it's completely stupid and I love it for that. Okay, Groper. A monster which only deals two damage. Doesn't sound too interesting. Doctor, I am... I mean, technically we could go with the seed pod because the biologists also buff plants. But this wants to be adjacent to fire or water, so let's choose none right now. We still have one more spot right now. There we go, 257 damage, pretty decent, nice. Three books have been read. Good jump, seed point, sheep, ghost, water, anarchist, giant red. Reroll, come on. Dar, yes! And another direwolf, and another writer! Oh, but we probably, I mean, this is only uncommon, this is rare. So Dar is also human, base damage too, but does double damage for each adjacent beast also gives all beasts on the field plus three damage and saves them from destruction. So plus three, no matter where, to all beasts and does double damage for each adjacent beast. Yeah, let's go with the Dar. There we go, look at him, he's so cool. Damage 160? What, does double damage for each adjacent beast? Wait, what? Is it like double, double, double? multi sixing times, what? There's only one, two beasts right now. I mean, these guys are doing a buff. And of course, you have the Siren who also doubles his damage. 160 damage. Oh, damn. Told you guys, this guy is important. Wow. 448 damage. And if you would call on the reinforcement, we would deal 10 times as much. Oh, man. 
Still would have liked to choose the writer because that would have helped us as well. But there are pretty cool. Oh yeah, we also have the bird who deals doubles his damage or something. If at least eight pieces are marked for destruction, no reroll. Come on, silver android mirror demon. Ooh, deals damage equal to five times the number of bosses you have encountered this time. Oh, interesting. Demons are pretty rare in general, but have very unique effects. I had a couple in my last run. And I think through demons, I was able to generate vampires. And the vampires had a base damage of zero, but they every turn on the field, they would steal the base damage of all adjacent units around them. So I tried to go, for example, these um, Nautilus um, Kraken that we could choose who have like a 10% chance or a 20% chance to die if they are not adjacent to water. They have a base damage of six. So I always try to literally fish for those Krakens so that my vampires could feed on them on their ink. <laughs> those were definitely ink drinking vampires to get their base damage. And then these Nautilus would die off a couple of turns because there was no water. Ah, oh, poor Nautilus guys. Okay, paramedic. It marks any for destruction seed pot silver. Transforms any word dragon within two square radius into a monster hunter. What's the hunters are probably pretty cool, but yeah, let's take none. It's fine, we have such good damage output. There we go, 160. Let's go. Read the books. Knowledge is power, literally. And nature is power. Okay, let's go. Cleveland. Chunk Demon, Master of the Massive. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, you know, Dark Souls 2 Chunk Demon. Again, looks so awesome. But does nothing else. Has more HP, deals one damage to us each turn. That's about it. Even though it seems like there's planned to be something else later on, like multi attacks or something, but on more attack damage. But right now it's always just one attack, one damage. Go team! 224 this time. <laughs> yes, Dar. And the knowledge. Ah, oh, this is awesome. Silver, water, laser frog, scrap metal, skeleton, reroll. Uh, fire, grenade, fungal spore. Oh, book! Transforms into a giant fungus after three deployments. 50% chance to transform each adjacent human into a zombie. Cool. But yeah, definitely the book. I mean, a writer is essentially five free books. But this is also pretty good. Oh, was it even ten books? I oh no, we accidentally created this. If two adjacent books are found that are not marked for destruction, marks them for destruction and transforms itself into a bookshelf. Is that good for us or is that bad? This might be bad. Bookshelf. Doubles the damage of any adjacent... Oh, no, it's not. It doubles the damage of the adjacent biologist. The question is, does that also damage the buff? I don't think so, because the biologist buff is only the base damage. So, considering that I mostly want the biologist for the buff, the bookshelf is okay, but it's not amazing. On the other hand, I'm not sure how it works. Doubles this, the damage of the biologist, which also gets doubled by the sirens so if it is remotely like with dar maybe they deal a lot of damage now okay reroll mortar idol civilian garbage collector randomly marks one deployed common piece for destruction increases its own base damage by 10 for each destroys itself after eight uses no thank you none let's go Let's see, there's a bookshelf. You now deal 48 damage and you now deal 40 damage. Yeah, never mind, bookshelf. Knowledge and animals, guys. That's what we need, 370 damage right now. We have 28 because we have still a bunch of books. That's totally fine. Okay, lost two riders again. Uh, we only uh, or always will deploy 25 randomly. We can have like unlimited militia size. I mean, would actually be interesting to try to figure that out, what happens if you have like, you know, how big is the UI? This is 25, so 50 is here. What is this, 60 maybe? 60, 70? And if the UI or, you know, these icons would just continue go to, to go down or if there actually is a limit on this. But technically it's unlimited and we will always just randomly pull 25 out of those. And Dire Wolf, interesting, very interesting, definitely the book, always the book. Let's go. 26 damage. Ah, oh, we don't have Dar on. Nope, there's Dar. Only 56 damage. Ah, oh, Dar, no. <laughs> okay, definitely enough game. Ah, oh, another bookshelf. I'm not sure if I really want this bookshelf, but on the other hand, they were so, so cool. Ah, silver, reroll, gold, gray goo, will o wisp, crimson terror, power pellet. I think I'm not gonna choose anything. 
call pellet. Doubles the damage of all adjacent pieces this deployment, then marks itself no. Okay, let's not take anything. Because we want this anyway. It's fine. There we go. Chunk demon down. Let's see the total. The final one. Demon 8. It's Diabeat Sugar Lord. 2500 HP. Again, the first boss had like 80. Diabete, created by a mad scientist who thought to weaponize the human body's metabolic processes. Using science and dark magic, the scientist imbued a pancreas with sentience and immense power, turning it into a monstrous creature capable of controlling the bodily functions of those around it. Diabete realized the potential of its newfound abilities and set its sights on a city, where it's saw an opportunity to feed its insatiable hunger for sugar and chaos. Using its power to manipulate the citizens' cravings and induce diabetic comas, Diabete was able to take control of the city with ease. Oh, let's fight Diabetes! Which is actually a serious thing, so let's fight this. I have 256! Yeah, Dar! <laughs> oh man, I love Dar. He's the best. You can also have like two Dars on the field or so. Darception, so to speak. Uh, Rebel. Silver. Sheep. Ghost. Yeah, another book. Yeah. See a book, pick a book, so to speak. Because if you take anything out from this video, guys, ladies and gentlemen, young ones, just everyone, knowledge. Knowledge is power indeed. Another direwolf. Yeah, okay, one more direwolf can't hurt, right? I have one more, because right now we have 23. Because we don't have any writers, we write more books. 567 damage. Okay, let's do it for the fun. Let's activate the emergency call. Do we want to tell, deal 10 times the damage? Yes! Mayday! Mayday. 5,670 damage! Yes. Diabetes has been eliminated. Health safe America! Can you recruit them all? Radioactive waste pacifist coming fall 2023. Okay, we actually have in the demo a somewhat more precise release date than on the official, uh, official Steam page. More bosses, more pieces, equipment, more cross synergies, ascensions, and more. Ascension sounds cool. So, yeah, this was a million monster militia, ladies and gentlemen. I really like this game, and I really wonder how long term enjoyment can be half had with this game frankly because the foundation is cool as the numbers go up but with a lot of synergy that's amazing but that's all the control you have to it's simplified it's fine you don't have any meta progression hmm the bosses are lore wise freaking cool mechanically freaking boring so i'm as much as I enjoy this game, and I truly do, I hope you can feel this even, I'm still doubtful on how much long time enjoyment can be had there. So, because I feel right now the only real engaging thing as for a player would be, well, maybe to reach the end once, to have the biggest man number, and then maybe to try all the different tribes and synergies, which probably there are a lot of. But mechanically, it's always just choosing a piece, right? You don't have to be any strategic or tactical, you know, use all any of those strategic tactical knowledge against any boss. Because, right, at least in the demo, they always just deal one damage, they have cool lore, that's about it. There's nothing different on the field, nothing different on the music, I don't know, boss music, it's just their HP that is bigger. And that is kind of what makes me wonder, again, I, how long can that be fun? was fun for a couple of rounds for me a lot of fun actually but i could see myself at least personally and of course this is always personal and subjective what i'm doing here and not necessarily objective but i i could see myself getting bored after like maybe five six more rounds or so because it would be the same over and again and i've seen it i had a lot of fun tried a bit of builds that's about it there's nothing really mechanically that I could do different or would I, that would switch it up on the different bosses or so. Does this make sense? So, yeah, it, it, it's it's like a big thumbs up because I really enjoy this game with a caveat. 
with a little star there. That means maybe just for a short time. But maybe that's enough. This is clearly more of a simple game, like in premise. This is not like a big AAA studio. And maybe that just, you know, this cool enjoyment for a couple runs is completely all that it needs to be. So that is my opinion. Please tell me what you think of Million Monster Militia. If you want to try it out for yourself, we play the demo, or if you watch this video later, this game might already have been released. So link is always down in the description. Please tell me what you think of the game. Please tell me what you think of my commentary and gameplay thereof. Feedback is always greatly appreciated. If you want to take it one step further, please consider sharing this video. That helps tremendously. But regardless, make sure to stay awesome. Truly thank you for watching, and we're going to see each other in the next video.